In this example, we're going to find a confidence interval for a proportion. In the problem, we're going to pretend that we're a math company, and the commanding officer has asked us to investigate, investigate a claim made by a manufacturer of night vision goggles. The manufacturer claims that only 5% of the goggles are defective. And our task is to determine if that uh, claim uh, is actually true. So we're going to take a sample, make our observations, and use statistics to be able to report back to the commanding officer and tell him or her if we think the claim is true or if it's false. Let's get started. We'll begin by constructing a 95% confidence interval for the defect rate of the night vision goggles. As always in these problems, I want you to begin by uh, identifying the parameter and verifying the requirements. The parameter in this problem is a proportion or a percent. The symbol we use to represent that is P. Now that's the population proportion or percent of goggles that are defective. Of course, we don't know what that P is, but we want to estimate it using uh, our statistics. The man manufacturer claims that P is 0.05 so they claim that P is 5%, which means that Q equal to 1 minus P is 0.95 or 95%. Recall that in studying a proportion, you're really studying a binomial variable. There are two outcomes. Either the goggle is defective or it isn't. P is the probability that it's defective, and Q, which is 1 minus P, is the probability that it's not defective. Now we need to determine if we've satisfied the requirements to use the techniques that we studied in class. And for a proportion, there are two requirements. We have to have at least five successes and failures. Well, NP, the number of samples, times P, the probability of a, a success, would give us the number of expected successes, and that's 125. And NQ is well, it's 2, 3, 7, 5, so they're m both numbers are much greater than 5, so there's no problem going ahead using our technique. And that's really saying that we have enough, a large enough sample so that we can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. So we've identified the parameter. It's a P. It's a proportion, which in this case represents the percent of goggles that are defective. We're good to go to use the technique. And now we need to go back and read the paragraph and identify each number and assign it to the correct assign to it the correct uh, statistical symbol. Well, we found 133 defective goggles, and that's going to be represented as X in this case. Remember, it's a binomial situation. In a binomial variable, X is the number of successes. Sounds a little bit strange here, but a success is actually finding a defective goggle. We found 133 defective goggles out of a total of 2,500 that we sampled. Our point statistic in this case, or our estimate of the true percent or proportion of goggles that are defective, would be x over n, 133 over 2,500, or that's 0.0532. So that's our point estimate of p. Of course, Q hat would be 1 minus that, or 0.9468. And we call, in this case, our point estimate of P, we call it P hat. So we've calculated P hat and Q hat based on our sample data. Now the next step is to uh, find our critical values. Before we find the critical values, we need to know alpha and alpha over 2. Well, this is a 95% confidence interval, so alpha is 0.05, alpha over 2 is 0.025. That means we're going to put 9.95 area or probability smack in the middle, and on each tail we'll have 0.025. Using the inverse norm functions, we will get the left and right uh, critical values, negative 1.96 and 1.96. So that's what the problem sets up like. Now let's go ahead and calculate the confidence interval. Well, we'll need the margin of error, and the formula for the margin of error is right here. So let's begin to substitute in what we know. 
The Z said 0.025 is 1.96. We saw that on the previous slide. Uh, the P hat and Q hat and N we also know. Substituting those into the formula, we get 0 0.009 as our margin of error. We can use that then to create our confidence interval, P hat plus or minus E, or substituting in that would be 0 0.0532, that was our P hat, plus or minus 0 0.009, and we end up with our 95% confidence interval of 0 0.0442 to 0 0.0622. Now to express that as an inequality, we'd write it this way. And that just reminds us that what we're studying is a P, a proportion or percent of goggles that are defective. And then we conclude by summarizing our findings in a single sentence. In this case, we would say I'm 95% confident that the interval from 4.42% to 6.22% contains the true defect rate of the night vision goggles. Now notice in, in my summarization, I switched from expressing P as a decimal, 0 0.0622, to a percentage. When we do the mathematics, we have to have P expressed as a decimal when we use it in our formulas. But for summarizing a result, usually people would prefer to hear it as a percent. That's a more common way to express your finding. So we're 95% confident that the defect rate is between 4.4 and 6.2%. The manufacturer claimed it was 5%. Well, 5% is within the confidence interval, so we had no reason not to believe their claim. Now, the, uh, the last step was to calculate sample sizes if we wanted uh, different margins of error. So we're going to calculate sample size for a 1% margin of error and then a 2% margin of error. The formula for a sample size when we're working with a proportion is right there. Substituting in, we get this expression. Just notice that E squared on the bottom. Remember, E is the margin of error. That has to be expressed as a decimal. So a 1% margin of error in our formula is expressed as a decimal 0 0.01. When we do the calculations, we get this number and always when we're calculating a minimum number of a sample size we round up so we'd use 1,936. So to summarize, in order to have a 95 percent confidence interval with no more than a 1 percent margin of error we would need to sample 1,936 goggles. That's quite a few. Well what if we reduce that margin of error to 2 percent? going back and then plugging the appropriate values into the formula. This time we get 483.75, so we round that up to 484. So that's saying that to have a 2% margin of error in our 95% confidence interval, we would need to have uh, 484 goggles in our sample.